Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I have a question for you guys. Are you a disgusting pig? When you wake up in the morning and see yourself in the mirror and see the grotesque blob of human flesh that you are, do you think about just ending it all? Does your mother and father wish that they never had you because you've never been able to be with a woman? Are you becoming so desperate that you're thinking about switching over to men? Is Leonardo DiCaprio starting to look more and more like Margot Robbie? I mean, I don't blame you with the last thing. But if you are a grotesque pig who's never been with another woman and whose mother and father wish that they terminated you during the first trimester? Don't worry, because by the end of this video, I will teach you how in middle school, I created an empire in which thousands of girls begged to be a part of. I think I did a good job selling this video. And if any ad companies are watching this right now, that is exactly how I will sell your product. I will call people disgusting pigs who are blobs of human flesh and say that the only way their parents are ever gonna love them again is if they buy your product. So if any companies are thinking about sponsoring my videos, go ahead and do it. I will tell people to kill them themselves for you. Okay, that wasn't just a meaningless rant. That actually had something to do with the video. Because in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I was a complete fuckboy in middle school, how I got girls to like me in middle school, some of the worst lies I've ever said in my entire life in order to get with some of these girls, and yes, of course that includes my grandma dying over 300 times in the span of a year. And lastly, I will be talking about a very controversial topic. You know, Alpha M and other YouTubers that try and tell you how to get girls to like you might not agree with this topic. And this topic is why you should lie to ugly fat bitches and actually tell them that you like them. I have said so many things in this intro to get me canceled, but I think my plan here is to say so many things that they don't know which one to cancel me for. But let's get back to the video and talk about how I was an absolute fuckboy in middle school. So my fuckboyness didn't originate in middle school. Like most of you guys who've seen my other videos of me talking about my time at elementary school know that I was definitely a ruthless fuckboy in elementary school. In elementary school, I would date whichever girl was the best at tetherball. And it didn't matter what they look like. It didn't matter if they were pretty hot or if they looked like their parents should have aborted them to make the world a better place. And looking back on it now, I was such a good person back then. Like, I didn't care about how they looked. All I cared about was their personality. And by personality, I mean if they were good at tetherball or not. And I was such a good person back then that I wouldn't just stay with one girl. Like, I wouldn't let one girl just hog up all the time with me, you know what I mean? Like, I would always be giving other girls chances to be with me. And that's why anytime any of the girls girls I was with got beaten at tetherball, I would immediately leave them with no hesitation and instantly start dating whoever just beat them at tetherball. I was a very fair and just person back then. And yes, I did make some nine-year-old girls go home and cry themselves to sleep, but it was for the greater good. And the greater good was for me to not be seen as a loser whose girlfriend lost a game of tetherball. And if you ask me, that's a great reason to make some 10-year-old girl cry herself to sleep and not be able to trust another man for the rest of her life. All right, now that we've got my my roots as a fuckboy out of the way, let's talk about how I created an empire in middle school. Now, there's two questions that I feel like I'm gonna get asked a lot right now in the comments. And these two questions are, why should I be a fuckboy? And how can I be a fuckboy? Now, let's talk about the first question first, because I feel like there's a very simple answer to the question of why you should be a fuckboy. And the answer is, there's honestly nothing better in this entire life than being able to look at someone and say something that crushes all of their hopes and dreams at once. There is nothing better than just being able to look at someone and just seeing a complete look of hopelessness and depression. I mean, you just wouldn't understand the feeling of joy and happiness you get after you crush all of the dreams and ambitions of a 12-year-old girl. Okay, in all seriousness, I have no idea why I was a fuckboy. I mean, I have since changed now. I've been with the same whore for over a year. Okay, sometimes my jokes go a little too far. That one was a little too far. If you're watching this, please don't break up with me. I love you. But anyways, let's move on to the second question. And answer the question of how to become a fuckboy. Now, I look at it as a three-step program with the first step being the most important. Now, remember how I said I was going to talk about a very controversial topic? A topic that a lot of other YouTubers would disagree with me on? Well, that topic is going to be the first step of this program. And the first and most important step of this entire program is to lie to ugly fat bitches and tell them that you like them. And honestly, I cannot stress the importance of this first step. You know, all the little middle school F-boys nowadays always want to go after the most attractive girl at their school. And that is not how you build an F-boy empire. To build an F-boy empire, you need to start at the ground and build a strong, voluptuous, burrito-loving, fat foundation. Without the support of these Fionas, you will never be able to build an F-boy empire. Now, this is a very controversial topic, but let me make sure I explain. Because once I fully explain, you will understand why this topic is so revolutionary and genius. So, in 
middle school, I was an attractive kid, but I wasn't like a Ryan Gosling or anything like that. And you know, being an 11 year old kid in middle school, I obviously wanted to be with the hottest girl at my school. But you know, since I wasn't like a Ryan Gosling, there was a good chance that if I went up to the hottest girl at my school and asked her out, there was a good chance that she might not say yes. And so in order to get with the hottest girl at my school, I had to think outside of the box and be creative. And so I started thinking and I was like, what do hot popular girls like more than anything else? And then after pondering this question for quite a while, I realized that hot popular girls like two things more than everything else. Number one, they love trends. All of those kinds of girls would rather die than not be able to wear the newest sweater from Brandy Melville. And the second thing hot popular girls love is they love to be seen as better than everyone else. And so after realizing this, I decided that I was going to turn myself into a trend. And listen, I know that sounds complicated, but just hear me out. So in order to turn myself into a trend, I had to get every single girl in my school, regardless of looks, to somehow like me. And the easiest way to do this is by starting with the girls who are completely beneath you. And this is where the fat, ugly girls come in. I started Snapchatting every single girl in my entire school who had at least a double chin. I was Snapchatting girls with double chins, triple chins, quadruple chins, I mean shit, even whatever the fuck five chins are called. And I would always Snapchat them the same thing. It was a copy and paste of, hey, you seem chill, we should talk more. Now, I never ended up talking to any of them more, but by doing this, my empire slowly started for me. Because after I said that to Miss Triple Chin over here, Miss Triple Chin would tell her other friends who maybe had a double chin or maybe just even one chin, and Miss Triple Chin would be like, girls, there's this new guy that I like. He's really cute. And because Miss Triple Chin did that, it started a chain reaction. Because after she told all of her other friends that, her other friends who were mildly more attractive than her would be like, you know what? He is pretty cute. Now, this goes back to the second thing all middle school and high school girls love, and that is they love to be seen as better than everyone else. And that includes their friends. And so after Miss Triple Chin said that this guy was cute, her friends who wanted to be seen as better than everyone else would be like, you know what? If I get with this guy, I'll be seen as better than all of my friends. All of my friends are gonna wish they were me. And so at this point in middle school, I've now become a trend among the uglies, and I'm starting to become a trend among the slightly more attractive uglies. And so this brings us to our second step of the program, and step number two is to start dating mildly attractive girls. So obviously, at this time in middle school, I hadn't actually dated any of the girls I Snapchatted. I mean, thank you a lot for starting the movement, Miss Triple Chin, but I mean, I'm not gonna actually date you. Get the fuck out of here. So at this point in middle school, I had some decently attractive girls who wanted to be with me. You know, girls were, if I squinted hard enough, I could be like, yeah, I could see you as a middle class prostitute when you're older. You know, not the high expensive ones, but also definitely not the ones on the street where you could find for like $5. And so when these semi-attractive girls started to like me, I started to date some of them. And when I say date, I don't actually mean date. I mean more like I would tell these girls that I love them and that we were gonna get married and have kids, and then three days later I would leave them for a girl who was like 1% more attractive than them. And I still remember the first time I ever did this. So let's call this girl Tiffany. So I Snapchatted Tiffany like any other girl and I was like, hey, you're chill, we should talk more. But after I sent the Snapchat, I realized that Tiffany wasn't actually that bad. And so Tiffany responded with something like, yeah, you're chill too, we should talk. And so I decided to start talking with her and I ended up dating her in the same day. Now, this was actually a good strategy for me because when word got around that I was dating Tiffany, all the other girls were like, what? He's dating Tiffany? I am so much better than Tiffany. And so it caused other girls to want to take me from Tiffany so that they could be seen as better than Tiffany. But anyways, me and Tiffany started dating and I mean, I knew I wasn't gonna stay with Tiffany for very long because the strategy was to date her so I could move on to a girl who was slightly more attractive than her. But I mean, in Tiffany's head, she thought we were gonna get married, have kids together, and live together happily ever after. And I mean, I don't really blame her because the first day we dated, I did say something along the lines of, Tiffany, you're the love of my life and we're gonna be together until the end of time. And I mean, throughout the three days that we dated, I lied every step of the way. I mean, we discussed what our kids' names were gonna be, where we were gonna get married, and even how much we would both cry at each other's funerals. And Tiffany was definitely 
100% in love with me and thought that I was her soulmate or something like that. And I mean, in my head, I saw Tiffany as a future middle-class prostitute who was a stepping stone in order to get to a slightly more attractive girl. And I mean, it ended up working because three days after I started dating Tiffany, another slightly more attractive girl Snapchatted me and she was like, hey, how's it going? And the moment I got that Snapchat, I immediately left Tiffany. And some of you right now may be asking, oh, how did you break up with Tiffany? Like, what did you say? And this brings us to our third and final step of the three-step fuckboy process. Now, some people may argue that this last step is actually just as important as the first step. And this last step is, when in doubt, Grandma Karen died. It could be of a heart attack. It could be of a hemorrhage. I mean, shit, if you want to say Grandma Karen was involved in the FBI and was shot and assassinated by North Korean operatives, you can say that. I mean, be as creative as you want. There's really no limit to this. And this doesn't just apply to being a fuckboy. I mean, you can use this excuse anytime you want. And I encourage any middle schoolers right now watching this video to go ahead and use this excuse. Personally, Grandma Karen has died over 3,000 times in my life. And I mean, it goes from dying from peacefully in her sleep to dying of COVID, from dying saving the US from a nuclear bomb dropped by North Korea. I've got out of homework, tests, plans with my friends, and I've even got out of a cross-country practice before. And that is a true story. During my first week ever at cross-country practice, I ended up missing one of the practices because I slept in a little too late, and I literally emailed my coach and told him, sorry, I can't come to practice today. My grandma died. Hold on, let me try and find the email. Oh my god, boys, I fucking found it. Look at this fucking email. Sent at 12-26-2016. No subject, just, I'm sorry I couldn't make practice today. My grandmother had died. <laughs> What is wrong with me, bro? I sent this as a freshman in high school. I am so happy I found this email. I did not think I was gonna find it. For those of you who think my stories are fake or anything like that, I swear to God, I've done everything I've talked about. I'm telling you, bro, it's the best excuse in the entire business. It doesn't matter what it's for, even if it's for because you missed a practice because you slept in an hour late. Trust me, use this excuse. It works 10 times out of 10. Okay, but let's get back to Tiffany. So as soon as that other slightly more attractive girl snapchatted me and was like, hey, what are you doing? I immediately snapchatted Tiffany, who seriously believed that we were gonna grow old together and have kids together and all that stuff, and I snapchatted her and I was like, sorry, we can't be together anymore. My grandma's dead. And I mean, I didn't even tell her what she died of. I mean, I didn't even have to. I literally just snapchatted her with no context and was like, we can't be together. My grandma's dead. And I never talked to Tiffany again. And this started the cycle of dating a girl, telling her how much I love her, and then telling her that my grandma had died and that I could no longer see her, but in reality, I ended up dating a new girl the next day. And this was actually working, and I was moving up in the chain, and I was getting to girls that I would actually date, even if I wasn't doing all this kinds of stuff. I mean, the girls I was getting were actually pretty attractive. But you see, I became too greedy because I always wanted more. You see, I thought I had a foolproof system that could never fail, but eventually I met my match. Because there is one thing on this earth that can ruin this seemingly foolproof plan. And that one thing is a crazy psycho bitch. So as I said, I was moving up in the chain and I was actually getting to the seriously attractive girls. When all of a sudden, I got to this one girl and we'll call her Jess. So like any other girl, I ended up dating Jess within the first day of talking to her. And I mean, everything was going to plan. I mean, I only had to stay with this girl for like another two days before I could break up with her and move on to another girl. But all of a sudden, things started to get a little rocky. Because literally a couple hours after me and Jess had started dating each other, Jess texted me and she was like, hey, I don't think I can do this. I just don't think I'm in the right headspace for this. And I felt like it was trouble, but I didn't feel like it was too much trouble to already bring out the Grandma Karen card. And so I text Jess back and I'm like, what do you mean you're not in the right headspace? What's going on, my love? And she texts me back and she's like, I don't know. I, I lost my dad a couple days ago and I just don't really feel like I'm in the right headspace for this. And I mean, I was sitting there reading that text and I was like, hold on, you are not about to use my trick against me. There is no way that you're gonna out pity me. I am the master of this. And so I text Jess back and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I actually lost my grandma a couple hours ago to a heart attack. But I mean, I know I have to keep going because I know my grandma is looking up in heaven right now and she wants me to go for you and date you and be happy. And I'm sure your dad is looking down on you 
you from heaven right now and he's saying jess be happy go date that guy and i mean after i sent that i was sitting back proud of myself thinking i definitely had just won and there was going to be no more problems but you see there was going to be a lot more problems and as i was sitting back proud of myself i got another text from jess and she was like well yeah but it's bittersweet because my dad actually used to abuse my mom so i don't know if i should be happy he's dead or if i should be sad and after she sent that it was game on for me and i texted back and i was like yeah i actually know exactly how you feel because my grandma was actually a major drug dealer and a rival gang member shot her in the face i mean technically she did die of the heart attack when the guy pointed the gun at her face but i mean he still shot my grandma like eight times right in the face and you know my grandma being a drug dealer put a major strain on my family so right now i mean i just have a mix of emotions and i just don't know how to feel and i swear to god i sent that text and then i sent another text and i said by the way i also have a dead brother so it was literally one text of me saying that my grandma was a drug dealer who got shot eight times in the face and then right after it, it was a text that said by the way i have a dead brother and i mean that last text was just something i had to say in order to one-up her you know what i mean like i couldn't just be equal with her i had to make sure that she knew that my life was worse than hers and jess texted back and she was like wow that's crazy i'm gonna tell you something that i've never told anyone else i've actually for a couple days thought about killing myself and in my head at the time i was like yeah sure kill yourself after i break up with you in three days yes maybe that joke was a little too far maybe not i don't know and after she said that i texted her back and was like wow i'm gonna tell you something that i've never told anyone else i've actually tried to kill myself like 20 times which is like the dumbest lie of all time because i mean if you've tried to kill yourself 20 times and it hasn't worked you are just the biggest loser of all time i mean take the hint and stop seeking attention grow some balls grab a gun shove it in your mouth and shoot yourself you fucking pussy but here's the problem with the last text i sent her you see i went a little too far because after i sent that text she was like yeah you see our lives are just too messed up to be with each other i can't be with you i'm sorry it was a bad decision and after she said that there was nothing i could do it didn't matter how many of my family members ended up dying there was nothing i could do or say anymore and just like that my f boy empire collapsed because as soon as a girl broke up with me and i didn't break up with them that was the line that every single girl saw me as because jess broke up with me no one was gonna see me as higher than jess and there was nothing i could do to change that no matter how many fat girls i snapchatted no matter how many family members died there was nothing i could possibly do and so for the rest of my middle school days the highest i could ever get was jess and that's the story of how my middle school f boy empire rose to power and fell and probably the most messed up part of this entire story is you know at the time for some reason i thought that jess was just making all of that stuff up but later on i realized that jess was actually telling the truth about all of that stuff and i mean after i figured that out i realized that i guess not everyone in this world lies about their grandma dying and if any middle or elementary school students are watching this right now i encourage you to try this and see how far you can go and like always boys if you take one thing away from this video take this and the moral of this story is boys if you ever don't want to do your homework it's okay grandma karen can have another heart attack but anyways guys if you enjoyed please subscribe leave a like follow me on instagram and i'll see you guys in the next one peace